On today's episode of Political Personalities with Sky, we are meeting with former Congressman Steve Israel, who owns a bookstore in the town of Oyster Bay. Here we are with former are. Congressman Steve Israel at his bookstore. Once upon a time, I was holding doors open in the White House and the U.S. Congress, and here I am holding doors open to my 1500 square foot little bookstore in Oyster Bay, and I welcome you. I'll still call you Congressman, because yes, once a congressman, always a congressman. That's what they, say. they told me when I left Congress that uh, I'd have the title of member of Congress for the rest of my life, and I didn't argue. I think it's. However, had I known that 16 years ago, I would have retired 14 years ago, because having a title is pretty cool. <laughs> um, so this is Theodore's, and uh, we're located in, in downtown Oyster Bay, uh, and the shop is in honor of uh, our most famous resident, President Theodore Roosevelt, or as he preferred to be called, Colonel Roosevelt. And what inspired you to open a bookstore? Well, uh, I served 16 years in Congress, and I lived in a, a universe of sound bites, uh, of something called one-minute speeches. When you spoke on the floor, you were literally confined to one minute. And I was tired of the partisanship and the screaming, uh, and the kind of social media blasts back and forth. I was always a voracious reader. And when I left Congress, it was my dream uh, to spend more time writing. Uh -huh. I published two novels. Yep. Um, and beyond writing, I wanted to be able to be a bookseller. Uh -huh. I love when people come in, not to make a point, but to ask questions. I had a fr front row seat to the most majestic and elegant and beautiful places uh, on earth. And this is where I work now. This is our stock room. This is, these are the members of our team. You're all going to be famous. Hi! Is, I, I, I fundamentally worry about the, the future of democracy in our country. Mm -hmm. um, I think that gerrymandering, where you either live in a, bright, a ruby red district mm -hmm. or a bright blue district, mm -hmm. social media, the tribalization of cable news has brought America not to, to two completely separate and distinct tribes. We're not the United States of America. We are blue team, red team. What would you do differently if you were still in Congress about what is going on with us? I don't know that I would do anything differently because for 16 years, uh, I tried to find some common ground on this issue. We couldn't. And the reason for that, Sky, is that the country has become so polarized uh, and so intense in its politics that if you are a Republican member of Congress, even if you believe in universal background checks, even if you believe in common sense gun responsibility, you can't vote for it because if you do, you're going to be primaried from somebody further to the right of you mm -hmm. and you will lose your primary. Mm -hmm. I hope people don't take this out of context. If you are in Congress and living that kind of life where you are separating yourself from your family, traveling constantly, doing 20 to 30 separate events a day, uh, surrounded by your staff, in a bit of a bubble, right? Flying on planes that don't say Delta or American Airlines, but United States of America. That is not a normal existence. One of the reasons I left Congress was I, I just couldn't stand the fundraising anymore. And I couldn't stand the partisanship and the sound bites. But also, after 16 years, I felt like my daughters, I didn't give them the time that they needed. I was right. in Washington every single week. Right, and when right. I wasn't in Washington, I was busting it here in yeah, Long Island yeah. to be everywhere I could. And that was unfair mm -hmm. to my daughters. Mm -hmm. uh, the Biden administration asked me to join. And I was struggling with it. Yeah. Uh, but when, at the time, my two-year-old grandson uh, showed up at my door and, and, and spread out his arms and said, Appa, and gave me a hug, I literally, no embellishment here, literally, I turned to Karen, I said, I'm calling the White House and telling them I'm not leaving. I'm staying here. I want to be with my grandchildren. Oh.